factor groups g mod n. Uh, g mod n is the set of left cosets of the normal subgroup n together with a binary operation defined as we did in class. You take one coset a n star b n and it's a b n the other a coset where a b stands on the outside. If n is normal then g mod n is a group. Notice if if n was not a normal subgroup we still would have we could still partition the group into a set of left cosets but the the problem is is that the binary operation a n star b n equals a b n would not be well defined so it's important to remember that n must be a normal subgroup so we'll prove now that g mod n is a group the most important part of this proof is in proving that the operation is well defined. So let's make sure that you understand what that means. We want to prove that the operation is well defined. We haven't had to do this before, but this time our coset AN might be written as A prime N. We know it doesn't make any difference who, who stands outside to name the coset. And BN, another coset, could also be named by any element inside the coset. So we want to make sure that if these cosets are named differently, if someone, if an, a different element is standing on the outside, that we get the same thing if we apply star. So we want to show that um, a n star b n is the same thing as if we computed using a prime and b prime. Or equivalently that a b n is the same coset as a prime b prime n. So let's try to prove this. If a, using this right here, if a n is equal to a prime n, then we know that a is equal to a prime some times some little n in the normal subgroup. So I'm going to call it n1 because we'll need more than one of these. And we know that b could be written as b prime times some n. So I'll just call it n2. So with this, we could say that ab is equal to a prime n1 b prime n2. Now here's the part of the proof where we're going to use the fact that n is normal. So let me write that since n is a normal subgroup of G, we know that the coset n b prime is the same as the left coset b prime n. The left cosets are equal to the right cosets. So we know that uh, little n1 little n1 b prime could be written as b prime times possibly some other element of n. So I'm going to make up a new name now, n3. It might be n1, maybe not. But since n is normal, the, right, the left cosets are the same as the right. So if I write n, little n1 times b prime, I know that that also is in b prime capital N. So I could write it this way. Now I'm going to substitute that up there. So AB is equal to A prime uh, times B N3 N2. Excuse me, do I want, yeah, B prime, excuse me. And therefore ABN, capital N, the coset ABN is equal to 
a prime, b prime, n3, n2, the cosine with that standing on the outside. But we know that these are elements of n. So this here is simply n, isn't it? Because n3 and n2 belong to n. So we can conclude then that a, b, n is equal to the coset a prime, b prime, n. This was because little n3, n2, capital N, the coset, is the same thing as n. So that proves that the operation is well defined. I could state this or a n star b n is the same result as a prime n star b prime n. And the operation star is well defined. Notice where we used the fact that n was normal. We never really needed it until we got uh, right here. We had to be able to write this as a prime b prime times something in n. And we were able to do that because the left cosets of n are identical to the right cosets because n is a normal subgroup of g. So we know now that on this set of left cosets of a normal subgroup n, we have a well-defined binary operation on the set of cosets. Now we have to prove the group axioms. Well, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Star, oops, let me go back to white. Star, our operation, is associative. And the reason why is, if you take AB star, uh, oh, excuse me, AN star BN, and we do that first, and then star CN, well, we have ABN star CN, which is AB CN, and we have associativity, and this is where we're we're using something here. We're using the fact that G is a group. Since G is a group, we know this is the operation in G here. We know that this is the same thing as A times B, C, N, using associativity in G. So we have then A, N star B, C, N by the definition of star, which is a n star b n star c n. That's my dog. He sees something out the window. Okay, so star is associative. We need an identity element, and clearly the identity in g mod n is n, or you could think of it as en, because n star an, where an is any other uh, coset in the, in the factor group, is equal to, well, let's call this en, just is equal to eAn, which is an. So we have the identity. We need inverses. Well, let's let a n be any coset, any element in the factor group. And we know that a n inverse, now remember that's inverse with respect to the operation star, but we know what it'll be. It's going to be a inverse in G, the coset with a inverse in it. Because, well, inverses are unique, a and a inverse. And so we can say this is because a n star a inverse n is equal to a a inverse n, which is e n, which is n, our identity. So we have inverses, the identity, we have associativity, and um, we're done. We showed the group axioms, and first of all, we showed that star was well-defined. 
so we can conclude. Therefore, the factor group or quotient group, it's called sometimes, G mod N is a group. It is a non-empty set with an operation star. Star is a binary operation and the group axioms all hold. We're going to look at problem 40. This one I don't think I assigned, but let's just look at it and you could expect something like this on the test where you have to actually show the elements of the factor group. So this one, number 40, had uh, we were working with the group Z20. And Z20 is a group under addition modulo 20. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 19 as our group elements. And it's addition mod 20. We're going to take the subgroup H, the one generated by the element 4. And remember, we're generating by addition. So we get, well, we're going to get 0, so I'll put that in first. 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 4 is 0 mod 20. So there's our subgroup H. And of course, since Z20 is abelian, we know that H is a normal subgroup of Z20. So we can look at the factor group Z20 mod H. Z20 mod H. And we know how many cosets it's going to have, don't we? Because H has five elements in it, and Z20 has 20. So Z20 mod H uh, will, or has, four, four, there are, well, let's just say, four left cosets of H. There are four left cosets of H. And we know that if we define star, and let me just define star here, because you, you have to remember it's addition, and sometimes that hard, that's hard. I would write AH star BH. We're not adding the cosets, really. It's still our operation star. But that is A plus B H. Here I'll actually write the operation since it's addition. Okay, so the question wants us to write out what the four left cosets are. And uh, one will be uh, H itself. H consisting of 0, 4, 8, 12, and 16. And then we're going to have, well, let's see, 1 is not in there, so let's do 1 plus H. And that will give us, adding 1 to each element of H, 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. And we'll have 2 plus H, which is 2, 7, no, no, 2, 6, 10, 14, and 18. And then we have 3 plus H. And we add 3 to every element of H, and we get 3, 7, 11, 15, and 19. Look at the partition. Those four cosets partition the group Z20 into pairwise disjoint sets called cosets. H is normal, so we know that these cosets themselves will form a group. You should make sure that you could uh, make this little group table for the group of cosets for the factor group Z20 mod H. This is the group table for it. Again, make sure that you can do this. There's no sense in me uh, explaining each entry. Maybe we'll look at, at one of them. If you take, uh, let's just say we want to look at 2 plus H and add it to itself. 2 plus H star 2 plus H. I'll do that one slowly out here. 2 plus H star 2 plus H will be 2 plus 2 H by our definition of star. And 2 plus 2 is 4. Oh, I should have plus H here. <laughs> Excuse me. So I have 4 plus H. Well, think of the elements that are in 4 plus H. 
let's see, let me write down what H was again. H contained 0, 4, uh, 8, 16, 0, 4, 8, 12, and 16. Okay, so 4 plus H, 4 lives in H, so this is equal to H. And we see we put H here. We're not really adding the cosets. We're using our definition star, which says that this coset star, this coset, will, will operate in the group 2 plus 2, and it will be that coset. So you get 4 plus H or H. Figure these all out so you could um, do the same thing for a different simple group. Now, which group is this? Certainly this looks kind of complicated. We know that there are only two groups of order 4, and one is the Klein 4 group where every single element squared gives the identity. And we see that this is not the case. So Z20 mod H has to be isomorphic to Z4, the cyclic group of order 4. And the other problems I listed, number 50, uh, number 50 we did in class. Very, very carefully done. Well, actually, it's in the proof. Let's, let's say we did it in class, but number 50, we really answered that question when we proved that the factor group was a group. Number 47, again, you can look to your notes for this. We proved that the kernel of a homomorphism, for, homomorphism is a normal subgroup of G, and uh, G mod, then, the kernel of phi, is the factor group consisting of the left cosets of the kernel. This is very important to understand what this is. It is a set of cosets. The left cosets of the kernel of the homomorphism is always, uh, always gives us a, a factor group because the kernel is, is normal. Let's see, 48. I'm not looking at problem 48 here, but I have a note written to myself. The coset of any subgroup forms a partition of G. So what do we mean by a partition? We know that if H is just a subgroup of G, that the cosets AH, where A comes from G, that set of left cosets forms a partition of G, meaning that if you take any two cosets, oh, excuse me, they should be different, AH and BH, that they are either exactly the same or they have nothing in common. AH intersect BH is empty. That's what it meant, and that the union of them, the union of the cosets, just unioning over all cosets, uh, all cosets, gives you G. So these cosets are pairwise disjoint. The distinct cosets are pairwise disjoint, and their union is G. That's what it means to be a partition. I believe that's what problem 48 asked you. Be sure and know what we mean when we say that the set of cosets of a subgroup partitions the group G. And in the case that the subgroup is normal, that the, the set of left cosets form a group, the factor group G mod N.